Hello again. It's now the afternoon. If you are watching this right now and did not watch this morning's, first of all, who knows where you are or why you are watching this right now? This is a live stream that I do uh, every Friday in New York City. My name is Dan. Uh, the coding train. Um, this is the second part of a live stream that I started this morning. So I spent about an hour and a half or close to two hours starting a project, which I will get back to what that is. Um, and now I'm back. <laughs> I'm much more tired than I was this morning. I felt like this morning I felt like it was one of those rare sessions that I actually felt went well. <laughs> Usually, whenever a live stream is over, I just feel like, ugh. And I'm like sort of like miserable about it for the weekend. And then I, you know, post the edited content, get it, get that content up by the beginning of the following week on Monday or Tuesday. And people write nice comments and I think, okay, well, maybe it wasn't so bad. But this morning I actually felt like it was going well. But right now I just feel like oh, gotta wake up, gotta get some energy. So um, if you didn't watch um, this morning's live stream, you could go watch it now. Um, or you could just keep watching right now and I will uh, talk about a little bit what I did so far. Um, <clears throat> uh, Echo34, thanks for your comment. To be honest, I haven't even sat down and looked at my email since I pressed stop on the live stream. So I pressed stop on the live stream and I went to meetings and other things all the way through up until about 10 minutes ago and then I raced back up here. So uh, I will have to check out anything that anybody tweeted to me or emailed to me uh, or GitHub issued to me uh, later. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm just gonna jump right in. Um, all of the introductory stuff um, I kind of did uh, this morning. Um, Simon, thank you for your um, uh, suggestion about Barnsley's Fern. Uh, I will not be able to get to that uh, today, but I would love to do that at some point for sure. So I'm gonna try to really, if I, if I, I should be so lucky as to finish the project I started this morning. So I don't think there'll be any separate uh, coding challenge uh, today other than the, the project, the tutorial project that I'm working on right now. Okay. So let me just um, use, use a minute to, um, let me take a minute here to try to figure out where I was when we last left off this morning. So I talked about in general the idea of what I'm doing. run in place, do a couple jumping jacks, that'll help blood flowing to the brain. Um, all right, so we're working with a neural network system. Everyone keeps asking me, what's a toy neural network? I probably should just get rid of that word. I think the, re the reason the word toy is there, and I won't erase it right now because it'll be a continuity error, but um, the reason why the word toy is there is really just out of my own sheepishness. <laughs> and I want to emphasize that this particular JavaScript implementation is meant to be for educational purposes only. <laughs> and not only, but it's meant to be for educational purposes and I'm not really worrying about it being a um, robust, optimized piece of code and it's kind of like a caveat uh, for all of those, those people, wonderful people on the internet who like to leave me comments about how poorly I've written my code, which I admit, all of you are right. My code is written very poorly, but that's the way I like it. Um, and uh, because what, what would you have to learn if I didn't write poor code that you could think about how to improve and that I could learn to think about how to improve? Um, and also to differentiate it from uh, the neural network functionality that is part of these other two JavaScript libraries that I will start using more and more as we get to projects of larger scale. That's why the word toy is there. Um, uh, okay, so hopefully I wasn't too heavy-handed in my uh, uh, quick, my, dis my brief discussion about the ethics of uh, working with data and machine learning. Um, uh, any feedback or thoughts about how I could approach that topic better? I'm open and all ears about. Um, and so, I talked overall about the project. Then I looked at the Google Quick Draw data set. And the last thing that I did was create this processing sketch, which when I run it, would generate um, a binary file. Oh, right, this is gonna take a while. 
there any other comments here now? All right, no. Um, we'll generate, we'll goes and retrieves uh, all these doodles from the quick draw data set, uh, and then writes the binary file back out to a smaller one. Uh, and um, that is, whoops, that is here. So I have cats a thousand, rainbows a thousand, trains a thousand. I'm a little bit worried about these categories. Uh, I think the cats and the rainbow will differentiate quite well. And I guess, well, let's just see what happens. Um, all right. So now what I need to do is I need to get set up here. So I am going to go into Neural Network Coding Train, Examples. I'm going to start from the MNIST one. And I'm going to copy, whoops, I'm going to copy, ah! I'm going to copy it. I'm going to call this one Doodle Classification. Oh, maybe I'll call it Doodle Classifier. Ah, whatever. Doodle Classification works. I don't want the MNIST data. What's file.txt? Uh, that was me testing. I don't want this. Um, I want the libraries, the index.html, um, and then I want, um, oh, I need my data files. So I need to grab from the processing sketch these three data files and move them to the P5 example. Uh, close, close, close. Oops, ah, no, no. Pfft. Then I need to go to terminal. <laughs> And uh, I need to open this up in terminal. And I need to go here and sketch.js. Okay, so now I want to take out everything. So I'm just getting myself set up. Uh, Delete everything. Uh, let's say no loop. So it doesn't loop if it doesn't need to. And I'm probably going to forget that I put that in there later when I wonder why my code doesn't work. Let's just get rid of draw. And uh, am I running a server already? It looks like I am. Let's go to the browser. I can minimize terminal. Um, why is this the, this, I definitely want more space here. Oops. Uh, this, by the way, if I <laughs> had more free time, I would do this before I start live streaming. But, uh, okay, so let me turn this over here. Uh, all right, so I don't need this anymore. I don't need, I might, I don't need this anymore. I don't need this anymore. I don't need this anymore. And what I want to do is go to localhost. Examples, doodle classification, ah, okay. So interestingly, there is some stuff in the HTML file. Let's take this out. So I should think, here's the thing. Let's think about this for a second. Let's make a plan. When I previously did my MNIST example, I, I don't know if I would say wasted, but I spent a lot of time dealing with the DOM manipulation aspect of trying to do some reporting. And the thing that I want to demonstrate better this time is I think I'm going to separate the training and testing more precisely, especially because I'm going to use a very small data set. So I'm going to basically train and run testing separately. So I'm going to have the whole thing run through the whole training set, a certain number of, somebody please tell me, how do you pronounce this word? Epoch? 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 I like to say epoch, epoch. I like my eggs epoched. I think it's epoch, but I want to talk about that term, epoch. <laughs> When you say, 
You should know that when you say, first one sounds good to me, I have no idea what you're referring to because that comes way after I was speaking. Uh, epoch, 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 epoch. Um, I could go to my word nick tutorials. So, um, so what do I need? I think I'm gonna just console log stuff and actually really leave stuff out of the interface. And the interface, I'm just gonna show the doodles and then, I'll, and then create a canvas that I can draw onto. The way you say you think you say it. <laughs> but what if I don't know the way that I think I say I say it? Epoch, epoch is good, excellent. So let's get rid of this. Let's not, let's try to do everything we can to make use of my friend and your friend, the console. This is doodle, classifier, uh, sketch. Now, one thing I am going to do, not part of this first step of the video, is I'm going to create a new file. And I'm going to call this file load bytes. I'm going to just call it load binary. Dot js. All right, so one thing, oh wait, the US is different from the UK. <laughs> wait, hold on. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take some time with this here. I don't know if you'll be able to hear this. Epoch, epoch, epoch. Well, so this is UK. Epoch. And this is US. And as we all know, the UK way is the correct way. I mean, duh. So I'm gonna say epoch. <clears throat> all right. Um, uh, no, now I'm looking at my email, which is the worst idea. Back to the Slack channel chat, okay. Uh, now, um, so you might have noticed, if you were paying attention, that in processing, I use a function called load bytes which loads a binary file into an array of bytes. So I might then decide to go to and look at p5.js as a project. And um, uh, say like, okay, well let me look for load bytes. And by the way, I could probably look in the reference. This would be where I would start, but I'm skipping a few steps here. So I'm gonna search the repository and I'm gonna go to the code. Oh, it's actually not even in the code. So in an earlier version, uh, it was, there was, uh, what I was looking for is there was like a little function signature, function load bytes, and then to do. So what I'm going to do is uh, instead go to issues and look at this. Two days ago, an implementation of load bytes opened by somebody named, let's see, how do you pronounce that? I think it's, I think the proper pronunciation is Schiefman, Schiefman. Um, so I'm gonna look at this, and I'm going to just grab this little, this little thing here that I'll come back to in a minute. I'm gonna put it in here. I'm gonna change a couple things I didn't like about my implementation. Um, and I am going to, I will speak about this in a moment, <laughs> just bear with me. Then I'm going to go here, and I'm going to change this to load binary. Then I'm going to go here, and we're going to, we're going to, uh, and add preload. And what am I looking for under data, uh, cats 1000. cats1000.bin. So I think this is not going to work, but let's see what happens. Uh, and I need the data directory, and then I would, in setup, I want to say console log cats. Yeah, so we're stuck here. So let me see if I can fix this. Uh, just bear with me for a second, then all will be revealed. <laughs> uh, self decrement preload. Okay, So I need this little bit of code. This is what I forgot. And what does self refer to? Oh, because I need to refer to this. Oh, because this is using HTTP do. But can I just say p5 
five P5 prototype load bytes. That's what I'm, oh. Oh, because I can say P5 prototype dot load bytes. Oh, oh, I see. All right, hold on, everybody. <laughs> I'm going to do this in a different way because I am not writing a library. I'm P5 prototype load bytes. And then I'm going to do the awful not, but I could change this with, I could use ES6 here. Let's do this. Just everybody hold on for a second. Does that work? Uh, get ray buffer. I mean, maybe I could change it to this um, because it might as well use HTTP do. Decrement preload at the end of the callback. Huh. Let's see what this does. Load bytes is not defined. Uh, why? But I have defined it. Uh, what am I missing? This is what I wanted to not do. Spend all my time trying to deal with the data loading. Oh, I have an error. Line three. Oh, equals function. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Ah, yes. Okay, wonderful. Um, look at me. And look at me. I am the person now. Look at this. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> Everybody, aren't you excited by this? I, um, I, looked at this GitHub issue, which had this weird little var self equals this, so that the this reference would get stored, because this is some kind of callback thingy. And I said, oh no, oh no, I know about the arrow function. I know about the arrow function, which retains the context of this. But sadly, um, if I'm actually going to submit this as a pull request, which I would like to do, um, I am going to need to do it the other way because per, uh, P5, the source code, doesn't use ES6 yet. So let's say self. So I'm going to go back to the other way. And all, again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to what I'm doing here in a second. All right, great. Now I have one question. Well, I'm going to explain what's going on in a moment. But I have one question for those of you who might be watching who know about this stuff better than me. Um, so here's what's going on. I apologize. This is uh, not super beginner friendly, and I'm skipping a lot of steps here, and I try to avoid this. But something weird is going on here where I have to, I'm creating this object because I have to make this object that I'm going to fill in asynchronously here when the data is ready, um, and then, but return down here. Like I'm returning a reference to it kind of instantly. So um, the only way for that reference not, if I can't make, I can't do this, right? If I do this, this reference will be lost when this returns and you won't see the array. But is there a less awkward way? Can I make a new empty array, u int 8 array up here, fill it with the array buffer here so that what I'm returning is not an object with a bytes property? That's my question. Um, Oh yeah, and so hold on, var, I just want to leave this ES5 because, yeah, me, I am, so me, it's a, uh, the comment you're making about this being a sort of like awkward, weird thing, uh, I, maybe we can have a discussion about how to improve this because I, I, I agree this, maybe perhaps this could be something that could be improved. Um, but I'm going to just leave it as is for right now and then if I do this, Nope. What did I do wrong? Oh, why? Cats.bytes should be that. Why is it undefined? Oh, it didn't wait for preload. No, it did. Oh, that's weird. Huh? I could, no, I can't return data.bytes. I don't think so. Because it does, won't exist. Data.bytes doesn't exist yet when I'm returning it. Uh, I don't know the array, the length of the array in load bytes. That's correct. 
I don't know the length of the array until right here. Um, I'm going to leave this, but why? I'm missing something about, I'm missing something really silly. Why is it that I'm getting undefined here? Um, it's, it's not, preload's not waiting. So, I mean, um, a setup is not waiting for preload to finish. Do I, maybe I need to register it. Do I need to do that? Let's see. There we go. So I forgot about that. I have to register a preload method and then decrement preload. Okay, we've done it. I am so, 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 so want to make this a pull request to the P5 library right now, but that will send me off on a massive digression. And uh, yes, I know I can use a promise and I could do all the ES6 thing. I am becoming the person who does that stuff. And I would, uh, um, I will, um, uh, at some point, we have to. That I think it's interesting. It's a useful discussion to have that uh, P5 adopting ES6, but it just it's a big library and it's a big project to make that happen. So, okay, great. This is good enough for me right now. So, just to say, what have I done? What I am doing is I want the code to look like this because ultimately, when load bytes work in P5, it will just, the code will look exactly like this. But load bytes doesn't currently work in P5, so I have a temporarily an extra file with a working version of the load bytes function that I have written. And this is just using some native JavaScript to do a get request on the file, and it's participating in something that's pretty awkward and weird, but this preload, um, this uh, a, a preload st structure for P5 that allows you to have functions that have to finish before setup uh, triggers. Um, okay, I'm get my my phone is buzzing. Um, all right. Um, all right. Stop. Stop looking at my watch. I need to. I need to configure my note. Hold on. Let me configure my notifications correctly for once, because we're gonna. I'm gonna be here for a while. Uh, so how do I uh, notifications? No, wait, wait, wait. I need to go to my Fitbit app, maybe. And uh, um. Um, and look for notifications, no, settings, I'm getting a zillion messages that I want to turn off. Oh wait, I haven't, no, if I, no, I can't, no, this is connected to my, ah, oh technology, it's just what, it just makes things worse. <laughs> These brilliant ideas I have of how to effectively use technology. I only slept five hours last night? That's not good. Did I get any deep sleep? I'm sure you guys are really interested in this right now. Yeah, yeah I did actually, okay. Um, settings, no? Okay, forget it. All right, um, all right, I'm gonna move on now. I will hope the text messages will stop. What is going on in the chat? I know the mic isn't muted. Okay. All right. So, um, line 10 has let. I mean, this is, thank you. All right. All right. All right. All right, everybody. All right, everybody. All right, everybody. 
Let's get off the ES5, ES6 thing, because you know we all should be using ES71. That is my favorite ES. So this video is going to be about, this next piece is all about getting the data from, uh, the data into uh, JavaScript. And I'm going to just open this up to demonstrate, to start from here, okay. Plus, like, who wouldn't want to have this nice little image of cats. All right, all right, everybody. Oh. Yeah, a part of me wants to, uh, I should probably uh, just, I'm afraid of the U int eight arrays as well, but I'm gonna kind of leave it be, I think, for right now. Actually, do I, I want to investigate something? Oh, I'll let it be what it'll be, okay. All right, all right, so I'm reading the chat. I'm reading a chat. <sighs> all right, all right. Um, oh. Ah, I stopped it, okay. Yeah, okay, let's use something different. What if I, I think, what if I do what if I start a hundred later? Will we get a clean set of cats? Let's see. All right. Is this a clean set of cats? Anybody see any offensive or inappropriate drawings in here? I do not. I like that this one says meow. Now there are a thousand more, <laughs> there are 900 more, but at least in the image that I'm looking at, it's not popping up with something inappropriate. So let me uh, quickly just replace our other cats with these. Okay. Somebody can take the time to go flag one of those as inappropriate. That would be nice. Um, but you have to go to the Google Quick Draw site to do that. Um, let's take a look at the rainbows. Um, rainbow. Let's see how these look, just to be sure. Oh, I like these. Okay, everything is good. Good rainbows. No inappropriate rainbows. Okay. Now let's grab, why can't I keep that folder open? Let's grab, oh, I saved it over the cats. That's fine. Also, when I release this code, I don't want that to be in there. Uh, rainbow. 1,000, that comes over here. It's actually called Rainbows 1,000. Let's take a look at the trains. And let's quickly look at the trains. Trains look pretty good. I don't see any, that doesn't look like a train. Mm. I don't know about these trains. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trusting you, Slack channel. I assume that the YouTube chat is just giving me false information. Let's, I don't like that, those first trains. Let's start 100 later.
Ooh, there aren't that many trains? Let's go back to the beginning for the trains. Whoops. It's fine. It's fine. I gotta move on from this. I'm wasting way too much time. Looking at the trains. Scanning the trains. Trains. Well, these are like totally not trains at all, but we're gonna have to live with it. Okay. And now we can bring this over here. Whoops. Okay. All right, we're good, we're good. The sound, oh, the soundboard is broken again? <sighs> the soundboard is broken again. Weird. All right, all right. We don't need the soundboard. We'll be fine. Sorry about that, everybody. Now, oh, but I wanted to have the cats up at the beginning of this video. Cat. And I had to start 100 later. Is it 100 times n? Does that make sense? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Oh, no, this is me just skipping them weirdly. Oh, my, this makes no sense what I'm doing. But I'll just do it anyway. Um, <laughs> oh, loading the entire file from the internet every single time I run this sketch is such a disaster. That does every 100. I know, right? So my offset. Ugh, crash something, totally frozen. Yeah, I was doing every 100. No wonder we ran out of trains. Um, now there's like a party going on in the hallway. It's starting to feel like warm in here. <laughs> I'm feeling flush. Uh, I just need to say 784 times 100. Uh, but whatever. Let me just get some cats. I just want to see some cats. Memory all alone in the uh. <laughs> Morning. Morning is a good time, I think, to live stream for me. Apparently my brain completely melts down after like two o'clock. Uh I just want to see a few cats plus 100 times 784 plus times, yeah, okay. We'll cover this up here. There we go. Well, those are trains. <laughs> Fine, trains. Yeah, trains are good. There's no inappropriate looking trains here. Oh, there's totally inappropriate looking. What is wrong with you people of the internet? Ugh. One more time and then I'm just giving up on this. <laughs> I quit. That's a good point. All right, all right, this looks good. I think we're good here. I don't see any inappropriate cats. Does anyone see any inappropriate cats? I cannot find one. I'm doing my best. All right. <coughs> it's a family show, people. It's not even a show or whatever. <laughs> all right.
last on row four. It's fine. It's cat-like. It's just a poorly drawn. That's just a poorly drawn cat. Yeah, bad, poorly drawn cats are okay. This isn't even the data that I'm using. This is just my opening screen to begin talking about this project. Okay. All right. Can you guys, by the way, hear all the talking in the hallway? This might be in the background of the rest of the videos for today. There's a big party going on out there, so there's nothing I could do about that. Um, all right. Get it together, people. All right, I am back uh, in my quest to create a doodle classifier. Um, I finished looking at and examining and processing the data in processing using the load bytes function and rendering the images to a window and saving out the data files. So what I have now, and I'm gonna, so I'm gonna quit processing. What I did in between <laughs> the previous video and this one, sure, save, um, <clears throat> is I went, oops, uh, and I created a sketch called, uh, a folder called Doodle Classification, and in that folder there are now, there's a data folder with three files, Cats 1000, Rainbows 1000, Trains 1000. So I have 1000 train doodles, 1000 rainbow doodles, and 1000 cat doodles. Now, now, do I really have enough data to make a highly accurate, amazing, impressive doodle classifier? Probably not. I also probably don't have the neural network deep learning architecture to do it really, really well because I might want to add something called a convolutional layer. I will come back to that someday in the videos that I make. But I just want to try to use my basic JavaScript neural network library in a very simple way, use all those doodles as input to demonstrate the training process. So how am I going to do this? Well, first of all, actually, honestly, I'm, I'm not even ready for this yet. I need to just sort of see, do, do, can I get the data into, into JavaScript? So if you look now, I'm started a P5 sketch, and I'm going to add something like this to it. Function preload, and I'm going to create some variables like cats, trains, and uh, what's the other thing? Rainbows. And I'm going to say cats equals load bytes, cats, dot, cats 1000 dot bin. So I'm going to load, use preload uh, to load all of these files. Now, I've got something that I need to tell you. If you, if it is March 2nd, 2018, and you are typing this code along with me, um, this won't work because the load bytes function as of the time of recording this video is not implemented in P5. I have, with this example, a little extra file that I'm calling loadbinary.js that has a version of the load bytes function written into it. And I intend to, at some point, make a separate video, hopefully, about submitting that as a pull request to P5, then load bytes will work in P5. But hopefully, I'm using version 0 0.60 of P5, or at least that's the version that I want to be using. I'll have to check what I'm actually using. But um, so a future version will hopefully have it. But this is hopefully going to work. So I'm going to try to load all three of these files. So let's look. One thing I wanted to mention, by the way, um, you can edit this out, <laughs> it's like pause out, but yeah. is I wanted to show you that I, I kind of had this moment, this sort of like moment earlier today where I realized like, oh, look at these nice small files. They're 784 kilobytes. Well, why are they 784 kilobytes? Because 784 kilobytes is 784,000 bytes. And remember, each byte is one pixel. They're 28 by 28 images with 784. So I have 1,784 pixel images. This is how binary works on the computer. It's kind of exciting to see that really work out so nicely. The numbers work out so nicely. So, if I add this to my sketch and I go and refresh the page here, oops, 
It's gonna say file not found. Why is it gonna say file not found? Because I forgot that I have them in a data directory. So I need to add the data directory. Now I'm gonna do this. Now, okay, let's look at this. Cats. Cats is an object with a property called bytes. And there you can see there's an array. And if I kind of open this up, we can see like, oh boy, there's a lot of stuff in there. And I can kind of dig into it and look, these are those pixel values. There's a lot of zeros because there's a lot of black pixels because it's the drawings originally are white on black. Um, I, I, I think I'm going to alter that. Uh, but but um, so you can see this is working. One thing you might, might be new to you, which is a little bit strange, is that this is a uint8 array, which I find to be somewhat terrifying because I'm used to just, it's an array, it's got stuff in it. There are actually, there is something in JavaScript which is called a typed array. It's, it's kind of like a contract you make saying, this is gonna be an array, but you know, you can, I'm, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna tell you what's in it. It's, I'm only gonna be able to put this kind of data in it so you can store the data in memory more efficiently. And so this is a particular kind of array that can only store integers. Um, that's gonna be particularly useful for us. That's because we're loading that binary information. Timeout. Wait a second. Yeah, kilobytes is 1,000, right? Not, the 1024 thing is something else. Yeah, 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 okay. I'm right, I'm right. Am I gonna get flamed in the comments? Clapping, you guys can hear everything. I know, it's a little unfortunate. Is it, is it okay? Like, this, this is gonna be fine in the end? Like, it's just gonna have weird background sounds in it? I should get a soundproof room, I guess. It's okay. Yeah, kibby bite. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to move on. All right. Yeah. I agree, K Weekmon. It was a 1024 for me also. All right. Anyway. Yes, the array just stores a gray value. All right. All right, so moving on, let's at least try to draw the images into the P5 canvas so that we can see that things are working correctly. So I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna basically now do exactly what I did in processing, but in P5. And so in setup, let's do the cats. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say let me just do uh, 100. Uh, and I'm going to um, use a N to go through all 100 of these. Then what, for each one, I need to say, I want to create an image. And that, oh no, I want to say, I need to say create image. So this is one thing that's tricky about P5. The function create image creates a basically block of pixels for you to work with. Create IMG creates a DOM element that can be embedded in the page. And I, I could use either one in this case, but I'm just gonna make my life simpler and create an image that's 28 by 28. Then what I need to do is go through all 784 pixels. And I need to say image.pixels index i equals uh, cats index i plus, I need some offset. So the offset, offset is n times 784, right? Because each block is 784 pixels. Um, part of me wants to like split it up and have objects, but whatever, this is gonna be fine. Cat plus offset. Then I'm gonna say image.update pixels. Thank you, thank you. That's not a sound effect. That's actually people in the hallway applauding. They're not applauding for me though. Hopefully no one's gonna come knock on the door and say I'm being too loud. Uh, load pixels. And then I should be able to do exactly the same thing where I draw each image at an X and a Y. So X is N uh, modulus 10 times 28. And, and y is, well, I'm gonna have to use floor here because um, no matter what, uh, JavaScript does floating point uh, division 
n divided by 10 times 28. This is really what I did in the previous one. I just want to be able to see that the stuff is coming in. So this now, I'm sure I've made some mistakes, but let's just see if we see the cats now in the canvas. I see nothing. I see nothing. That is not good. So let's see, what could I have done? Oh, cats.bytes. So dot bytes, I need to say. There we go. Ooh, something's coming in, but it's totally off. Ooh, that looks like a mess. What have I got wrong? I plus offset. I less than 784, cats, bytes, image, pixels, I. Uh, what am I missing here? Oh, yes, I forgot something super important. In JavaScript, native HTML5 canvas does not store each pixel as a single, col single integer. So in processing, each pixel is a single integer which can be segmented out into the RGBA components. The actual pixel array in JavaScript is 784 times four long. There is a spot in the array for R, for G, for B, for A. So it's pixel zero, RGBA. Pixel one, RGBA. So I need to, I totally forgot, have a times four here. Uh, then, oh, oh my goodness. No, no, no. I can just do this. Times four here. And whoops, let me zoom out. I can say, let me get the actual value from the array and just put it in another. And I can say pixel i times four is val. And then that's the red value. And these are just grayscale. So plus one. And I'm going to goofily add a plus zero just so my code lines up because that's the kind of person I am. <laughs> then plus two. Everything I'm doing right now is just for the purpose of drawing. So, um, and then this needs to be 255. So basically I want to say, what's that single value inside of the cat's byte array? And I need to take that value and give it to the red, green, and blue parts of the image and have no transparency. And now I'm expecting to see, there we go. There's all the cats. And um, I prefer it to look like this. And there we go. So now, we can see that I can get the data into JavaScript. All right, I think that's, I don't know, it was a little silly that this was like its own standalone video, but I think I want to pause here because this was really just to like look at, okay, how do I, and how, I have that data in processing, how do I have that data in JavaScript? So what do I need to do next? In the next video, what I want to do is divide out, and actually let me do that in this video. The first thing I want to do is divide all the data into training and testing. Because the next video, what I want to start, in the next video I want to write the line of code, equals new neural network, and I want to start training. So let me think if I can cleverly figure out how to divide the data into testing and training. So uh, let's think about this. I could have done that, by the way. I probably should have just done that with the files. <laughs> <laughs> the applauding is really distracting me. I think people are winning awards. Um, oh my god, you're still talking about the 1024 thing in the chat? Okay. Um, pause, Mathieu, pause. Let me think about this. That's totally awards. It's the, uh, <coughs> it's the uh, film festival awards that are happening out there. Okay. Um, all right. Um, <laughs> um, let me think about this. What I was thinking of doing was taking the objects and renaming the bytes. Like train, I was going to have like, cats.training and cats.testing as like separate arrays. Um, yeah, I don't think that, that other thing is being live streamed. 
Um, can I use, um, let me just do some tests here. Was it slice? Is this how I do like slice? Yeah. Did that just give me like, and then if I said start at 784? No. So this is not, I should look up the documentation for slice. <laughs> slice returns a shallow copy of a portion of an array into a new array. And uh, the arguments are from begin to end, end not included. Okay, great. So that's what I'll do. And then I can use, oh, and I can use splice to take it out. So I could do what I could do, right, cats dot bytes. So I could do cats dot test it, testing equals cats dot bytes splice. And then I would be saying something like, I could just take the first 100. So I could say 0, comma 784 times 100. Like if I'm saying the first 200, right? No. Splice is not a function. Cat's subarray. Oh, I'm do subarray. But it won't take it out for me. So now if I look at cat's. That worked, but what if I want to delete? I guess if I took take the end, I could just ignore it. I can't alter the array. So that would be an argument for me pre-processing the data and doing two separate files. Ugh, whatever. No, but I could just do two subarrays. This is kind of nuts, but why not, right? Because then I could do cats.training equals cats.bytes subarray, and then I could say um, like 0, 784 times uh, 800, and then I would say cats.testing equal cats.bytes subarray 784 times 800 comma uh, cats.length, cats.bytes.length, right? And then I have, let me just clear this out here. If I say cats, and I don't know if you guys can see this very well. So this is what I want to do. I think this is what I'll do. That way I have all of it and I have testing and training. Okay. All right. Let's do that. I forgot where I, like, this is going to have a, like a serious continuity issue, but um, I don't remember where I was. Like, I, was, I don't know what I was zoomed into, but I'll be back. Okay, so one more thing before I move. Separate images as views into the array. Huh? Me, I am, so me is writing. My advice would be to create all the separate images as views into the array. That sounds complicated. <laughs> that's going to take a lot of, that's going to require like a lot of coding and um, I don't really want to do a lot of coding. <laughs> I'm going to move on, okay. I'm going to do my solution. Um, oh, oh, I see. Oh, that's a really good idea. Okay, okay, good idea. That way each array is its own thing. I like this. I like this, I like this, I like this. Okay, this is a really good idea. Okay, 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 I'm, I'm on board now. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm on board, I'm on board. We're gonna make this happen, all right. We don't have a lot of time here, it's already 4.30. Um, 
All right, I'm out of coffee. Switch to water. Okay. One more thing before I move on to the next video. Let's prepare the data. Let's prepare the data into arrays of training images and testing images. And there's a nice way that I just learned that there's a function I could use called subarray, which allows me to essentially like pull out or point to a portion of the array. So let me, let me discuss what I'm going to mean here. So, so this, is the, um, this is the raw data. So I'm going to just rename these like cats data, cats data, trains data, rainbows data. So I'm gonna, I don't know why I'm using suddenly the underscore data <laughs> naming convention, but I just want to name these data because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create some other arrays like cats, uh, cats training, uh, cats uh, uh, oh, trains, oh boy, this is bad, trains training, rainbows training. Let's just get the training data first. So if I have a thousand images, I want to use the first 800 as the training set. And I'm going to save the second 200 as the testing set. So what I'm going to do, and we can comment all this stuff. This was me just seeing that I could see it. I'm going to say, okay, uh, I'm going to say I want, uh, for example, cats training to be a new array, just a plain old array. Then I'm going to go from zero all the way up to 800. And I'm going to say every element of cat's training is cat's data subarray. And what the subarray array function wants is the beginning and the end of the subarray that I want to pull out. So I always want to pull out 784 pixels essentially. So I want to go from i, well, let's see. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to say offset equals i times 784. And so I want to go from offset to offset plus 784. And I think now is the time that I'm really putting this into a project that that 784 number really should be in a variable. And I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to use const. <laughs> Uh, const is a way of declaring a variable that you never intend to reassign, and it's a nice way of me protecting myself from ever reassigning it by accident. And I probably should be using const in a lot more places in the way that I code, but I use it very rarely. So I'm going to say const length, len for length, is 784. So I'm going to say i times len, and this is going to be offset len. So let's just, so this should, if I've done this correctly, we should be able to see now, I'm going to hit refresh, and I have a syntax error on line 45. Oh, I know, the, using const was really exciting, wasn't it? Party goers who are outside that door. Forever in this video, okay. Subarray is not a function because what do I need to say? Cats data dot bytes. I forgot that that array is inside of an array called bytes. And now if I look at cats training, we can see there's 800 784 pixel, 800 arrays, each one with 784 elements in them. So we can see here, here's the first one, here's the second one, and this looks good. You can see there's all the numbers. This is good. I now have my training data. Now, I'm actually going to do something kind of a little bit nuts. I'm going to change this to 1,000. Uh, and um, let's see, let's call that const total input, total data. I don't know. I don't know. These are, I gotta think about my variable names, total data. So I might change that someday. And I'm gonna say if um, I'm going to, I'm gonna say uh, if i is less than 800, do this. I'm just gonna do this hard code this right now. Else, uh, and then I'm going to say cats testing is also an array. Oh, couldn't training and testing just have the same number of characters? My life would be so much better if that were the case. Oh, it's going to, my auto format's going to change that. Oh, well. Okay, so now cats testing index i. Okay, this is good. Now, here's the thing. This is correct. 
but I've got to go from I, I minus 800. So this should really be a variable. I'm going to say let, um, I don't know, what, what threshold? <laughs> this is very distracting. Uh, I'm going to just call it threshold equal uh, a floor 0 0.8 times total data. And so now that's going to be, there's going to be 800 going into training and 200 going into testing. And this should not be 800, it should be threshold. So this is how I'm thinking of my data, dividing it into testing and training. And let's look at this. Threshold. And now I can say cats training is 800 arrays and cats testing is 200. Perfect. We are doing well. Part of me now, what I, I think I would like to do is actually make a variable just called cats, one called trains, one called rainbows. I'm going to make these objects. And in the objects, I'm going to say cats.training is an array and cats.testing. So I'm going to make these properties, cats.training, cats.testing. And now, uh, oops, if I just look at cats, sorry, if I just look at cats, there you are. <laughs> we see I have the training and the testing. The testing is 200, the training is 800. Boy, this is tedious, but it's worth it. We're working on, we're preparing our data. By golly, I'm going to dedicate two whole, two whole tutorial videos to, to working on the data. So now, um, wouldn't it be nice if I made this into a function? Let's make this into a function. Let's refactor this into a function. And I'm going to just get, I'm going to, I'm going to call this uh, prepare data. Call this prepare data. I want to get a uh, category and the data that goes with it. So I'm adding the training and testing to a given category from given data. Look at me refactoring the code while I'm working. And then I can just say prepare data, cats, cats data. Prepare data, rainbows, rainbows data. And prepare data, what was the last one? Trains, trains data. If I did this correctly, we can look and see at cats, there we go. Rainbows, there we go and uh, trains, there we go. Now, whether or not the data is still the correct data in there, I'm just gonna sort of feel somewhat confident that I did this correctly, but I have now, we have now completed sort of working with and examining the data in processing to save some new data files with much less data in them. I've now, in JavaScript, I'm able to load those binary files and I have a little function to divide it up into training and testing. So now, in the next video, I can finally write the piece of code that I've been wanting to do all along, let neural network equal new neural network. So that is what will happen in the next video. And thank you for watching. Perhaps I will see you there. Uh, all right. I'm getting some good comments. L-E-N, L-E-N is a little bit generic, a uh, little generic for a, um, what's that? Oh, I'm in the wrong view. What's that style guide that everybody uses? Um, it's like some, some company, it's like Airbnb's JavaScript style guide or something. Airbnb JavaScript style guide. So I feel like I'm supposed to use this, right? Um, and uh, and of course I don't. Uh, and then I'm supposed to uh, do this, not Luke underscore Skywalker. So I probably if should do this. I will. I will just do that right now. Nobody will notice. There's a little continuity issue, but it'll be fine. <laughs> so.
so many more places that I put that probably. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Camel case. That is correct. Um, all right. Total data. Total data. Okay. Why is this here? I don't want this. Can I make this a little smaller? Is this still okay size-wise? Um, okay. Yeah, I could write this. I could do that. Line 23 has an underscore data. Nope, I fixed it there already. Okay. Yeah, I'm not really so big on the whole style guide thing. You know, me and my loosey-goosey. I'm trying to get, I'm trying, I'm listening. I'm adopting and I'm, I'm changing my views. I can see value in conforming to style and with making it easier and, and to manage and collaborate in open source. Okay. Someday I will come to all of that. All right. So now, the next step. Uh, all right. All right, so let's get to the next step. It's 4.40. We've got at least another hour here. I, I, I have, I'm having like phantom buzzing. Like you know how when you're, you have, I don't even have my phone in my pocket. My phone would be on vibrate, but I keep feeling like it's buzzing. This camera just went off. All right. Woohoo! Yeah! All right. All right. All right, here we go. I'm just thinking for a second. Um, I think I want to move this. That's fine. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I th okay. Here we go. Just out of curiosity here, if I leave this in here, okay, all right. Right. Now, I think we're here. I mean, this is like, I'm ready to actually start trying to do, <laughs> yes, yes, settle down outside the room. <laughs> I'm ready to try to start uh, actually doing the neural network training. So just to kind of recap, you know, hopefully you've watched some of the videos that are leading up to this particular one. But what I have right now is I have a JavaScript program that loads eight data for 800 doodles of cats 800, well, 1,000, 800, 1,000 doodles of cats, 1,000 doodles of trains, 1,000 doodles of rainbows. All of these doodles come from the Google Quick Draw data set, which I covered in previous videos. Now, what I have also done is prepare the data and separate it out into, um, into, uh, eight, into about 80%, 20%, 80% for training and 20% for testing. So the first thing that I want to do now is I need to create a neural network that will work with this data. It needs to be able to receive a single image as input with 784 pixels. And it needs to give me an output with three numbers, uh, which each represent a likelihood uh, or like a score of how likely it is to be of a given category. So we can think of maybe this category will be cat, 
This category will be a rainbow, and this category will be train. And so let's actually set something up. Because we're ultimately, everything, is, everything boils down to numbers. I mean, we think of this as an image, and we think of these as string labels. But it's going to make sense for us, ultimately, um, to use numbers. So what I'm going to do, just really in the code, really quickly, is I'm going to add at the top some constants like cat uh, equals 0, rainbow equals 1. So this will be kind of a mapping. Um, rainbow, what was the other one? Train equals 2. This will map each one of those categories to a number. OK. So it's time to make a neural network object. Now, I already have imported into my code. Sorry, let me just take a break for a second because I'm so distracted by the cheering. And I, I, I just need to say that it's, gonna, it's okay. It's never a dull moment here. Hopefully this party is going to end soon. All right. I already have, as part of my index.html file, a reference to my neural network library. So when I release this code, when I release this example, and you're looking at the video description to find a link to the code, you will find it with this library included. And what this li where the, this library's repository is here on GitHub under Toy Neural Network JS. And what it allows me to do, if I go back to my main sketch, is I can create a variable. I'm going to call it, I'm gonna, it, dare I call it NN for neural network? I'm going to. NN for neural network. And I'm going to say NN equals a new neural network. So, what arguments go inside the parentheses there? The, the way the library is designed, and this is not universal, is first I need to say how many inputs are there, 784. Second, I need to say something else. And third, I need to say how many outputs I want, which in this case right now is three. The, the second argument is how many hidden nodes. Now you're going to want to go back and watch my neural network, build a neural network playlist, which, where I go much more into detail about what the hidden nodes are and how they work. But right now, the hidden nodes, it's really, you can think about it as the kind of magic in a way that's in between the input and the output that allows it to make lots, that allows it to learn. And so the more hidden nodes we have, the more parameters there are, the more things, the more sophisticated in a way the neural network can be. Now, of course, there can even be not just the number of hidden nodes. If there's, if there's input, hidden, and output, there, what I'm talking about is sort of vertically how many hidden nodes are there. But there can also be more hidden layers. But this is, again, kind of beyond the scope of where we are currently in my videos about machine learning and neural networks. Right now, the library, I'm going to just assume there's 784 inputs. There's one input, there's one set of inputs with 784. There's one set of outputs with three. And then there is a hidden layer, which I'm going to arbitrarily just say, I don't know, 64 sounds like a good number. And if maybe things aren't working very well, maybe I'll try making it higher. If it's running too slow, maybe I'll try making it lower so there'll be less math for it to do. We'll just sort of play around with it. OK, so coming over here, I'm now going to say 784. Then I'm going to say, uh, <laughs> I've already forgot, 784, oh yes, 64, and 3. So this is my neural network. 784 inputs, 3 outputs, and 64 hidden nodes. And time, uh, and I think I'm good. I'm good. I'm done. No, I'm not done. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to train it to learn. I don't know why I'm all caps all of a sudden about cats. So what I want to do is say for let 
i equals zero, i is less than cats.training.length, how many training data sets are there? i plus plus. Then, uh, what I need to do, so here's the thing. By definition, this is a cat. So, and I've set, so I need to say the, let me create the outputs, right? Or, or the targets. So, uh, oh. oh, it was going so well this morning. <sighs> I'm going to create an array called targets. And I'm going to say that is 1, 0, 0. Oh, they stopped. They stopped outside. Just give me a second again. I'm sorry that I keep stopping, but I can, I can hear that the ceremony has stopped and now it's just people talking. And it's going to be, that's going to be much better for me. I need like a cookie or something, a little jolt, but I'm going to get through this. Okay. I'm going to make an array called targets, which really should have something like 1, 0, 0. Remember, this is supervised learning. So what I'm doing is I'm giving it a known input with a known output. And if I'm saying the first element is the sort of the output array of the output vector is related to a cat, then the target for each one of these images is 1, 0, 0. Now, I'm just realizing I'm going to have a problem here. Because I don't, I'm going to keep, I don't want to train, hmm. I want to mix up my data. Stop, time out. <laughs> Let me think about this. This is not going to work if I train on all the cats, then all the rainbows, then all the trains. I need to mix it up. That data set has to be completely shuffled. So this whole prepare data thing, I kind of need to go back and do it in a different way. Uh, I need to train randomly. This is no good. So, right, each one of the, and I need to normalize the images, but that's okay. That I'm not too worried about. Um, and that was a nice, thank you for the alert about that. Uh, so do I dare go back, just pick one random one from a random array every time? Yes, that would work. However, I kind of wanted to be more thought, I guess I could just train, I, w I was so excited to say epoch. <laughs> so I was going to try to sort of as opposed to what I might normally do, which is just train at random for a while. <laughs> I was actually going to try to like go through every single data point all and finish and be like, I did an epoch and then do the testing. Mm -hmm. Let's think about this. Um, I mean, I could remove it. I could create an array of indices to everything, and then I could start removing stuff. It doesn't matter the order of them at all. The order should be random. I would love for the order to be randomized each epoch. So I think this will actually be OK if I create a um, separate arrays of all the indices and just pluck those out using like splice or pop. I have to randomize the order. Um, make three counters, shuffle. Oh, what if I, do you think it's bad if I do one, two, three, one, two, three? That's bad, right? Concat each training, right? I could concat each training array, then shuffle, but I haven't retained which one is which. So um, I would have to, I have to give them a label. Like I could give each array and the first, like another, another, um, <laughs> thank you. I could give each array a 785th element, which is its label. But I should have done that while I was preparing the data. But I can add that in now, right? Like for example, all I need to do is also is add in a label here and push that in at the end. That's what I'm going to do. Okay? 
We're gonna, well, um, we can even put it at the beginning because I then I can pop it off. Because these are just, oh, no, no, no. These are just regular arrays. Mm. No, I can't alter these subarrays. I could make an object that has the label and then shuffle. Um, I think I'm going to do. Um, Category.training.label. Yeah. Oh, you mean that'll actually work? Like, if I do this? Yeah, that's what I would like to do. Like, in other words, but I need to do this. Will that actually work? Because JavaScript's so goofy. Let me just do this for a second. Yeah, look at that. It also has the label cat. Yeah. I love JavaScript. OK, that's what I'm going to do. Then I'm just going to like concat them and shuffle them all. All right. Here's the thing. There wasn't really a good, but it's OK. It's OK. It's fine. All right. So let me go back to where I was making the targets. Actually, I'll, I'll let me go. Let's see if I can go all the way back to here. Okay, so I just realized something. Here's a terrible idea that I was about to do. Let me train the neural network with all 1,000 cats. Now, let me train the neural network with all 1,000 trains. Now, let me train the neural network with all 1,000 rainbows. This is no good. I need to, to, in order for this to work effectively, I need to just be training it with all the training data in random order. So it's like cat, rainbow, train, train, rainbow, cat, rainbow, cat, train, train, cat, rainbow, train. So I'm going to need to do, I, I thought I prepared all the data in the previous video. I'm going to have to do some more work preparing the data. And so one thing that I think that I can do is I can actually pass in, what I'm going to do here is pass in the label. So this is a cat. This is a rainbow. I'm going to give it, and this is a uh, train. And I'm going to add another argument called label. Ah. Oh, my shoe just came untied. I'm going to add another argument. I'm going to I'm going to add another argument called label. And what I'm going to do, this is a little bit goofy, but you can do this kind of stuff in JavaScript. This array, I'm going to just give it an additional property. And I'm going to give it that label. And I'm going to call it label. So it's a little bit goofy how I'm using the same variable name everywhere, but I think in the end it's going to make things make sense. I will show it to you in the console. And this is I minus threshold because I need the testing data. And this is testing also needs a label. So look at this. Let me just show you what's going to happen now, OK? Now that I've added that in, if I refresh the sketch, let's look at the rainbows. You can see there's still 800 training rainbows, 200 testing. If I look at the testing ones and I look at number two, for example, this is the array and it has a label of one. So all of the rainbows should have a label of one. All of the cats, if I look at just an arbitrary one, 101, 
have, whoops, and this is a weird thing you can do with JavaScript, even though it's an array, an array is an object, and so I can attach some other properties to that object as well. So the labels are in there. Now what I can do is, I sh what I need to do is put all of them together into one big array and then shuffle it. So what I should say is, let training equal a blank array, and then training equals training dot concat cats dot training like concat should join it right and then just join the rainbows I don't know if this is right <laughs> and the um, the rainbows and the what was the other one I got the trains <laughs> all right so here we go so that is now let's let's uh, Let's see what that comes up with, console log training. Let's look at that. There we go, 2400. That's 800 times three. Uh, yeah, why is there, oh yeah, yeah, it's 2400 of these. Wonderful, and look, and now, and this one in here is label one. Oh, this is good, this is actually making sense. Okay, so I have all the training data in here, but I wanna shuffle that, I want it to be in random order. But so how do I shuffle an array? Let's go to the array. I mean, I know how to shuffle an array, but let's go to array JavaScript. Uh, I, is shuffle a function that is actually part of arrays? Or do I need to write my own? Mm. How did you get Min's crowd? How did you get that beautiful animated rainbow? Um, me, I am so me is saying I would move the sub array creation out of the if and label it there. Oh yeah, that's much better. Um, but I'm gonna just leave it how it is. Um, okay, so I have to write my own. Okay. So I have to write. I have to. I have to write my own shuffler. Right? It's not going to do it for me. Does P5? Oh, I could pick a random one. I think it's better just to shuffle it. Okay. I've done this for other coding challenges, haven't I? Shiftman, shuffle, and array. No, uh, hold on. Let's go to uh, all the code for the coding train and look for a shuffle. Shuffle, shuffle! It's in the, um, looks like it's in uh, the traveling salesperson. Here we go, look at this. Shuffle. Why is it commented out, but in the code? Right, this was my way of shuffling, and then I do a swap. It's in P5. Oh, it's in P5, oh wonderful. Oh, that's so awesome. That must be why, that's why I commented it out. <laughs> Thank you, I'm behind. So let me just see, uh, let me just see how this works. So if I have, okay, so you're saying if I say shuffle a true, it will actually shuffle the actual array. Okay, great. Thank you. Oops, no! Don't close that window. Okay. Okay. Well, today is our lucky day because it just so happens that P5 has a function in it to shuffle an array. Um, so I'm going to say shuffle, 
training. Now, one thing that's interesting about the P5 shuffle function, and let me just show this to you in the, let me just show you this in the console, and let's make sure this is true. Let's say I make an array, and I uh, say four, one, nine, 10, right? So there's an array. I could say shuffle the array A, and it giving me back a new array in a randomized order, but if I look at the original array, it's still in the original order. So I could say A equals shuffle A, but another way I could do it, in, I believe in P5, is say shuffle A and then pass in a second argument that's a Boolean variable, true, and then I get this array again in a random order, but it's actually affected, it's actually affected that array itself. This is similar to when I looked at array functions like, does the array function map, alter the array, or make a new array? This is similar here. So I'm gonna say shuffle training true. So, and then I'm going to console log it again. So this was it. It should be like everything at the beginning should just be like one, Zero. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. It's showing me. So the problem with console log, by the way, is it tries to be, this happens to me all the time. It tries to be smarter than you. And so even though it's console logging it here, I changed that array. And it, um, so even though it's, I'm console logging it before I call shuffle, it's there in the console and it's like live updating as the date of that object changes. So I would have to, so I think we're just gonna trust that this is working and I'm gonna take this out and I'm just gonna call shuffle again. And as I look at it, we should see here, okay, the first one is a two, the second one is a zero, the third one is a one. Perfect, it is in random shuffled order, excellent. So now I can finally go through and train the neural network. This is my image drawing stuff, which I don't need. So um, I am going to, this is making the neural network. This is preparing the data, making the neural network, and now sh uh, sh randomizing. And now we're gonna do something very exciting. We are going to train, oops, ha! Ah train for one, and what's the word that I'm gonna use? I'm gonna add a term somewhere, uh, epoch, which is, in my view, the proper <laughs> pronunciation of this word, not um, how I like to, uh, never mind. Anyway, so epoch, or epoch, whatever. <laughs> um, so one epoch is training <laughs> over all 800 of the training elements, but, in this case, it's 800 times three, so over all 2,400. So I want to say, for one epoch, I'm gonna say four, let i equal zero, i is less than training dot length, i plus plus. And I'm gonna say the, uh, the data is training index i, the label is training index I dot label. So now what I need is I need the inputs. And I, let me say, so inputs is training, in, is training index I. Is that array? This is a little bit confusing, but let's think about that. Let's just do this. So for a moment, just so I get a handle on this, I'm going to actually just do one thing. Instead of training over all the training data, I'm going to just train over one. So let's console log the inputs and then console log the label. And I just realized I've got a major issue, which is fine. It's, it's, it's a major issue, but, but I, can, I, can, I can do this. I actually need to make a new array. I need to make inputs actually has to be a new array. Because what I want to feed, if you remember, I talked about this in one of my earlier videos, I don't want to feed in the raw bytes of a number 0 through 255 into the network. I want to feed in a normalized number. So that byte value, which is an integer or a byte between 0 and 255, I want to divide that by 255 to get a floating point number. So I'm going to make a new array. Again, I'm not worrying about being efficient here. And I'm going to say, uh, let, uh, I'm going to say four, I'm going to do another loop. Um, I'm going to just use J. J is less than training index I dot length, 
right, which I know is going to be 784. So really, I can use that global variable, j++. And I'm going to say inputs index j equals training index i index j. Oh boy. Let's make another variable. Data equals training index i. That way I can just say, this I can say data dot length. And now I can just say inputs j equals data j divided by 255. I can't override that data because that's an integer. This, is this, this training array is reserved to be integers. So now I have the inputs. The inputs should be 784 floating point numbers. And then, um, so let's look at that. Let's look at the inputs and, oh, let's look at that. Let's look at the inputs and then let's look at the label. So we can see there are the inputs. Let's go into the middle somewhere where we have some color values. Mm, oh, there we go. So we can see these values have been normalized. Now we have floating point numbers between 0 and 1. Um, those are the inputs. Now, let label, and the label is, for this particular one, is 2. Now here's the thing. I don't, what I need for the outputs is an array that has three um, that has three values in it. It should have zeros for the category it is not and a one for the category it is. That's often, by the way, referred to as one-hot encoding. It's an array that has only one, it's a vector that only has one element with the value of one, everything else zero. So a way that I could do that is I can say let targets now be an array with three zeros in it. And then I could say targets index label equals one, right? Because remember that label is a zero, one, or two. So I either want this to be one, this to be one, or this to be one. And now I can say console.log targets. So let's do that. Let's run this. We can see, look. Now, every time I run this, I'm going to get something different. Because remember, it's shuffling the array a different way. But we can see, though, I got a lot. We can see this is working. I'm getting an image with 784 pick, not an image, but an array of 784 floating point values. And I'm getting the out, uh, target outputs. So finally, 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 I can say neural network train inputs targets. So what is happening inside of this function? So to really dive more deeply into what is happening inside this function, you've got to go back and watch my playlist where I build the neural network uh, library itself and write the code for the training function. But just to give you kind of like, just to give you, just to give you an overview, an idea here is what we're saying is, hey, Neural network, whatever state you're in, take this input data and give me some outputs. And maybe those outputs, it's going to make a total guess. So those outputs are going to be some arbitrary numbers like 0 0.4, 0 0.9, 0 0.003. It's going to just come up with some numbers. It's going to be random when it starts. But I've also given it targets. And maybe I said the targets are 1, 0, 0. So this is its actual guess, its prediction. And this, these are the targets. And so what the neural network is able to do is calculate an error. And the error is really something quite simple. It's just the difference between, and I mean subtraction when I say difference, between what it guessed and what the targets are. And it uses that difference as a way of internally adjusting a whole bunch of dials, which are essentially the weights of all of the connections between the inputs and the hidden layer and this output layer. So you can go back and watch my neural network playlist to dive into how that process works more deeply, but that's basically what the library is doing. So now, in theory, if I run this, and I'm going to take out this console log, and I'm going to put this back in. I can say console.log trained for one epoch. 
mm, we're stuck. Is it just taking a long time or are we really stuck? Ah, it just took a long time. So that can take a while, right? It's slow because I haven't done anything to optimize my code. It just, to, to, and, and really what I might want to do is like sort of like put this in the draw loop and have some kind of animation. But I'm, I'll come back to that. I'll, well, maybe we'll add that in a future video. I just want to see now what happens well, let's try using, let's try, let's evaluate it. Okay, so let's, wait, actually, you know what, we're good. <laughs> I gotta stop here. I mean, we don't know if it's worked, but I think this is a good point to stop and take a break and get ready for the next video. Because what is it that I need to do? I now need to test how it did. So the next thing I need to do is give it all of the test data. Don't train with it, but just evaluate how well it does with all of that testing data. So that's what I'll do in the next video. Then, of course, what I ultimately want to be able to do is I want to be able to use my mouse to draw a nice little train or rainbow or cat into this canvas right here and have it guess what it is. Okay? So, um, <laughs> so Hopefully this video about training has uh, helped. I know we're not seeing anything yet, so we haven't gotten to the exciting part, but we have now uh, trained over all of the training data. And if I looked at the neural network, it's still there. You can see it has some input nodes. You can see it's got stuff in it. I gotta talk about the learning rate. We'll get to all this stuff later. Okay, uh, see you in the next video. All right. I'm running out of steam. But <clears throat> but I'm going to keep going. All right. OK. Yeah, I could have used map. Why didn't I use map? I don't know why I didn't use map. How come I didn't use map? I don't know why I didn't use map. I'm such a using map kind of person these days. We'll refactor it later. All right. Shuffle training. OK. All right. All right, it's time. We are now going to take our code. Wait, okay, hold on, let's think. Okay, it's time. What are you watching, by the way? You are watching a video where I am now in JavaScript, in the browser, training a neural network to recognize doodles of cats, rainbows, and Trains. And you don't get to see anything here yet. We're gonna, I'm going to get to that eventually. All I'm doing is reporting that I trained over one epoch with 2,400 different doodles, 800 cats, 800 rainbows, 800 trains. Now what I want to add to this video is I want to test. I have also testing data, which the neural network has not been trained with, that is also labeled. I want to see, is it able to guess what any of that stuff is and how accurately is it able to guess? So let's do that right now. So one thing that I did previously is I took all of the training data and put it into one particular array. So let's do that with the testing data as well. Shuffling doesn't really matter, but I might as well shuffle it because I'm not actually training in this case. So we'll, we'll take out the shuffling. So I'm going to say let testing be an empty array. And I'm going to put in everything, all of the testing. Sorry, I don't know why I'm, I can just copy paste. And so this, I'm gonna, um, I am going to, so actually, let, let's do a little refactoring here. Let's, uh, let's take out, let's take this, and let's put this into a function called train, or train epoch, because I love the word epoch. It makes me sound like I'm doing something really fancy and futuristic. Um, so I'm going to train for one epoch, and so that's going to go right here, train epoch. And 
you know, this was kind of awkward what I did here, and I thank you for me I have to be putting in the chat. I'm trying to be a person who uses some of these higher order array functions these days. So let's quickly, I hope I don't ruin everything. Uh, one nice thing that I could do, I don't need, um, I don't need to have this silly little loop here. I can just say inputs equals data map x, x divided by 255. So this should, this makes a new array which takes the previous array and divides each value by 255. And this uses arrow syntax. And you can watch one of my higher order function video tutorials about the map function. But that just makes this a little bit cleaner. So let's add that in. Uh, and now let's run this again to make sure I didn't break it. Ah, uh, line 41. Shuffle training. Oh, I made this. So um, let's pass in the training array. Um, and we're going to train for one epoch. Finish, finish. There we go. Train for one epoch. So now I'm going to, that still works. I'm going to comment this out. And now I want to just check and take a look at the testing array to see if it has all the testing data in it. And it does. It has 2,600, which is right. Because if I had 800, It shouldn't have 2,600 in it. Hold on. What's going on here? Oh, yes. Look at this. <laughs> That's a bad error. I need to be concatenating with testing. So much for my copy pasting. Terrible, terrible. All right. I knew 2,600 was wrong. 600. 600 is right because <laughs> it's 200 times 3. I have 600 test data points. So now what I need to do, and let's just do this with one. Right? I can still do, I can evaluate how it's going to do with the testing data without actually, um, without actually training it. So let's look at how this goes. So um, let's write a function. Let's write a function called testing. Wait, what did I call this? Uh, train epoch uh, test all with the testing data. So let's do something similar to this function. And let's rename this data, just so it's, no, 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 let's not rename that. So let's do uh, test all uh, with the uh, testing data. I don't need to shuffle it. I want to go through everything. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I want to map it, same inputs, the same targets, the same way, but now, here's the thing. I want to say, uh, let prediction, or I'm going to say let guess equal neural network dot predict uh, inputs. And actually, I don't need to have targets, right? I just need to have a label, right? I want to predict my guess is, what does it think it is? So right now, what I'm actually going to do rather absurdly is I'm just going to console log the guess. And I'm going to console log the label. OK? And I'm going to, just for a moment, I only want to do this with one data point in the testing data set. So I want to test everything, OK? So I want to run this code. It's so quiet now. <laughs> I want to run this code, and I want to see what does it think it is, and what should it be. Let's run this. So we can see, look at this. These are the numbers that came out totally randomly. 0 0.05, 0 0.08, 0 0.08882. So it thinks it's a number 2, 0, 1, 2. And actually, it's a 0. It got it wrong. Um, it thinks it was a train, but really it was a cat. But that's okay. It just got it wrong. But this is good. So first of all, I need to do something where I uh, evaluate which one is it based on these numbers. So I need to find the index of the maximum. Uh, I need to find the index of the maximum value. So let's go to testing. Okay. So I need to turn this guess, which is just three numbers into a cl classification. So 
But basically, I want to say let classification, something like the maximum of, so let's see, is P5 has a max function, right, where I can give it two values, and it gives me the maximum one. If I have an array with a bunch of values, does the max function do anything for me? It tells me which one was the maximum. Oh, uh, sorry. Ah, let's, I, I, I just want to make sure it's working. A equals 0 to 9, 111, 4. Max A, 111. But I want the index. So does max secretly, if I call it in a different way, arg, I know arg max is kind of, the, uh, there is no P5 function called argmax. Does array have argmax? That's the technical term that you'll see in a lot of um, kind of machine learning libraries. Argmax is a function that will give you the index to the maximum value in the array. I could write my own function that does that. I could probably use reduce for it. I think I did that. Didn't I do that in my reduce tutorial? I think I did that in my reduce tutorial. Um, pause for a second. Oh, but I don't, I don't think I ever published the code for those tutorials. Did I? I could just write it right now. I'm afraid. Uh, I'm afraid. I'm going to take a break and have a little water. Ooh, clever. So I could use, um, I could use uh, reduce and write my own argmax function. Um, Sixy in the chat just gave me a really great tip because I forgot, whoops, that um, arrays have a, um, a index of function. So look at this, watch this. If I say max a, that gives me 111. What if I say a index of max a? That gives me three because the index of three, of sorry, 111 is three, right? This would be negative one because it doesn't exist. So I can say the classification is the guess dot index of, and let's separate this out. Let m equal max of the guess. Like this is the max value, and then I want to get the classification is the index of that max. And then I can just say, uh, I can just say console.log. Um, let's look at it to make sure this is right. Console.log classification and label. So guess are the raw array values. Classification is the argmax, the index to the one in that array that's the largest. And this is the target label, what it's supposed to be. So let's run this. So let's run this. And we got uh, so let's look at this. Does it make sense? This is a tiny number, 0 0.03. That's a big one, 0 0.87. Yes, it gave me 1, 0, 1. That's, that's the, oh, I can do, by the way, I can just unfold it to look. That's correct. Let's look at, let's do this one more time. Uh, we can see like, oh, got 1 again. Now it got uh, 1. It's always the middle one. It's interesting. Uh, but that's just random. 2, it got 2. So this is working. Now you'll notice these don't add up to 1. 0.2, 0.2, So again, I really should probably be implementing softmax as the function that I use that um, when I uh, when exiting out into the output from the neural network. Softmax is a special kind of activation function essentially, and this is something I cover in the neural network series that takes whatever that output is and transforms it into probability values that will all add up to 100%. But I'm going to come back to that in another video. This will just work just fine for right now. Um, and so I can say, now, let's say 
uh, let correct equal zero. If, if classification equals the label, then correct plus plus. And then I want to say the percentage equals the number correct divided by um, the total, which is uh, testing.length. So console.log percent. So let's look. Okay. 0% correct, 0% correct. Can I get lucky and get one? <laughs> I got one correct. Okay, so now what I need to do is let's do it for all of them. Let's not console log everything. And we should see, right, just by sheer randomness, we should see about one third correct, right? Not, there's been no training. The neural network without any training, without knowing anything, should get one out, about one out of three correct. Oh, why do I have, oh, I'm sorry. This should happen at the very end, after all the loops are done. You can see, by the way, I did get exactly that. 35%, 35%, 24%. So there's a lot, there's very few, there's only two. Oh, look at that, exactly one third correct. So things are going as expected. But can we improve it? Can we improve it just a little bit? Will this actually work? It's sort of sad that I'm doing this without showing you anything visual, but I'm kind of thinking you, the person watching who has visual talent, you could actually start to, a project for this would be to animate the training process and all of that, but let's, let's train for one epoch. Let's just run through the training set, then let it test again. I wish my sound effects were working because I would certainly use a drum roll roll. And then I'm going to say uh, uh, testing result. And by the way, I want to move this data prep up here. And then I'm going to just say this. So basically, we've prepped all the training data. We've prepped all the testing data. See how much work, by the way, it is just to work with the data? That is like a whole project unto itself. Then I'm going to train, and then I'm going to test. And we're going to see, and wouldn't it be nice if the testing maybe returned it? So let's actually uh, return that value and console log it down here, because I feel like that's kind of what I want to do. Uh, correct. Percentage correct. OK, OK, OK. Here we go, let's see. Training, 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 I'm training all the way. I like to train, I like to train, training all the way. Hey, training, 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 my machine. Hey, we got 80% correct. This shows that things are working, right? We got 80% correct, that is so exciting to me. I have to <laughs> toot the horn. Um, wow, that's, I think it was kind of like, mm. So that's really interesting. Mm, wow, well, this is very exciting. Uh, I don't even know what to do now. Percentage is correct, 80%. Let's just confirm that, right? Ready? I'm going to comment out the training. No training, no training. Remember, with training, 80% correct, no training. 33% correct. This is good. Machine learning. It's a thing that sometimes kind of almost maybe sort of works, but is highly problematic for many important ethical and social reasons. But that is something we will come back to. So we should really be, again, this is a good point. Should I even be doing what I'm doing? I think it's okay to be doing what I'm doing. Everything is pretty transparent. We know where the data comes from. We know what's in it. Um, and we can see, and we've learned something about a neural network. Oh, I'm just amazed here. Okay, so I should finish up this video, but let's, let's just do something interesting. Let's say for let i equal zero, i is less than five, i plus plus. So what we're going to do is we're going to train, oh, we're going to train, we're going to say epoch i plus one. I'm just going to start with one and go to six. So I can just say epoch plus i. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to see, I'm going to do it five times. Let's see how the percentage in increases. And let's make sure my training function re-randomizes the training data, reshuffles the training data. That's very important each time. Okay, let's see how much better it gets. 
Training, training, training. I'm training all my epochs. Loading, loading, loading it in training epochs. Training, oh, 76% correct. <laughs> training, training, training. I'm training all my epochs. You are watching a video where I am not editing out the fact that 79%. <laughs> Training, 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 I'm training all the way, I'm almost to epoch three, and here's what we say, 81%. Training, 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 I'm training all the way, I'm almost to epoch four, and this is what we say, 80, we went down. Wah, wah. So there's kind of a, it's interesting to see this here. So there's, this is where now we're revealing, I haven't really been, um, I have not been, uh, I'm not doing everything the, the quote unquote best or optimal or m m way that I could be. So for example, this idea of soft max and cross entropy, I've really got to come back to that. That's hopefully a way that's going to improve the training process. It's going to be able to squeeze out a little bit more accuracy if I add these two elements to my machine learning system. I also have something where it's like, hello, my training 2400 drawings that's like the tiniest bit ever. So I probably would want to run this with a much larger training set. That's really going to help. I probably want a kind of a larger testing set as well, just to have a better sense of how accurately this is doing. But I think we're in pretty good shape here. I feel like I'm happy with where I am so far. In the next video, what I want to do is kind of clean this up a little bit and think about maybe how to like animate the process, like show that it's training so it's not just saying loading here forever um, until it gets to the end. Um, and then I'm going to add a part where I can draw my own little drawing and see if we can recognize my cat versus my rainbow versus my own train. So in the next video, that's what I'm going to do. And I'll see you there. Wait, what's the n equals one sample size? I, I, I fixed that, right? I, yeah, I fixed it. It's going through all the testing data. What have I done wrong? This, by the way, I, even though I, I feel like there's so much that I could do better, this is so much better than my MNIST uh, kind of. Oh, it was good based on one output. No issue, though. Yes. No, no, I know. I know. I know. All right. Um, so let me think here. i am got to get going and go home soon. Um, but I, I, want, I definitely want to get this further today. I don't, I think maybe I won't, I don't think I'm going to do the soft max and cross entropy thing today. I think I just want to work on making this visually a little bit more appealing, that it's an example that people could work with a little more easily. So um, maybe what I'll do is create a train button, which will do the training, a test button, which will run the testing, and then let you draw in the canvas your own, your own sort of thing. All right? So let's do that. And uh, let's do that. Just trying to decide if I, I kind of want to put this train. So let me do this. I, I really like working with separate JavaScript files. Um, train test.js. So I'm going to take the train epoch function and put that in train test. I'm going to take the test all function and put that in train test. I am going to, uh, here I'm going to add um, what do I, what do I say? Input type equals button or something? I'll just use create button. I'm going to use the silly p5 create button. Um, and I'm going to add another file called dataprep.js. And I'm going to take 
this function. And I'm going to put that in there. And I'm going to go to index.html. It's a little silly what I'm doing, but this makes me happy. Train test and data prep. This should be the same. Um, so now my sketch.js is a bit cleaner here. Um, and I can make a button that just calls train. I can make a button that just calls test. Yeah, okay. Uh, oh, it's the button tag, yeah. Plot error as a function of epoch number. Oh, I, I don't want to, here's the thing. If I had, a, if, I, I could, if I imported something like matplotlib or whatever, I just don't want to get into like drawing a graph in this, but I, I could come back to that in a future video, but I want to keep things pretty simple right now. Um, um, so I just moved things to other files. I think this is okay, because I'm going to need a draw function. I'll get rid of this. Because what I could do when it's training, I could have it not be blocking. Can I have it train like in a separate, uh, it's all, yeah. Um, like I could have it, I think I'm going to skip the animation stuff. Yeah, because what I could do is I could, I could have it show like all the drawings while it's training, but that's, that's going to be too much work <laughs> right now. That's a good exercise for somebody watching. So all I'm going to do is create buttons and then have make, make it so I can draw on the canvas. Okay. Um, Okay, so I feel like what I want to do is, yeah. Let's do this uh, test. And what, what do I say, value or something? Oh, I forgot. Let's turn off the training, please. Uh, button train. Oh, it's not value. <laughs> By the way, guess who doesn't know HTML? <laughs> <laughs> That's better. No wonder it, nothing was showing up in there. Okay, train test. Oh, look at this. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Oh, that is just lovely. Uh, let's do. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Guess who also doesn't know CSS? It was very hungry. I guess that doesn't apply to the buttons. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever. That's fine. You can see those buttons. Yeah, can you set timeout for non blocking? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, um, okay, okay, all right, okay, okay, body, <laughs> yes, I know, <laughs> oh, I can do button, <laughs> ah, there we go, oh, it's beautiful, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, uh, oh, no, 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 hey, wait, come on, margin is what I want. Oh, lovely. Oh, this is really getting good now. <laughs> okay. Um, so let me discuss. All right. 
I can make the training in ASIC. I know, I know, I know, but this is not the, the problem. These are all really good suggestions, but, um, and, I, and I should mention it, but I've really got a core thing here, which is just to sort of demonstrate the concepts. And I could go off on, I'd be off on a tangent for so long to like promiseify the training and everything. So I'll come back to that. Uh, I don't like that this is, okay. Pause delay equals new promise, set timeout. Wait, delay one at the end of the loop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Set timeout, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, here we go. It's fine. I don't care about blocking. I'm all about, I prefer synchronicity, okay? <laughs> Okay. Okay, here we are. It is time. I am going to draw into this canvas a kitty cat. And then I'm going to have something show me here, tell me, is that a cat or is that a rainbow or is that a train? Now, before I can get to that, I want to first at least make this somewhat interactive that I can train for an epoch just by pressing this button. I can press this button to run the test to see how many things I've got correct. So I did some things in between the last video and this video. I added the buttons here in HTML. I, I, I used my magical advanced CSS abilities to, to alter how those buttons appear. I am now, I am now officially a graphic designer. Um, and uh, I have also, by the way, moved some of my code into separate JavaScript files. So the train epoch function and the test all function are in this JavaScript file, and I have this data prep JavaScript file just to kind of move things around. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to be able to attach events to those buttons. So I want to say a train button equals a select, and I'm using the p5dom function, train, and then I'm going to say train button dot mouse pressed and I will, um, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to say, right, train epoch. So this will run the train epoch function once. And the, uh, if you don't know about arrow notation, or um, then you can uh, check out my video about that, but I'm trying to use it a bit more in cases like this. Uh, test button. Uh, select test, and then I can say test button dot mouse pressed and do the same thing. Now here's the thing. The tr um, I'm going to actually write this function out a little bit. Um, actually, so hold on a second. <laughs> I, also, I, like, I like want to use the arrow functions, but I really just refactor it, refactor it later. Let's make this, let's make this easier to read. Uh, epoch. So, well, I'll write an anonymous function. That's okay. I can handle that. You can convert it in your head to an arrow function. I'm going to call train epoch. I'm going to have a variable called epoch counter, which is equal to zero. I'm going to say epoch counter plus plus, and then I'm just going to say create div. Uh, actually, I'm just going to console log it. Console log. And I'm going to do exactly what I did here. Um, but I'm going to say console log epoch counter. So every time I press that button, it's going to train for an epoch, increase the counter, and console log that. <laughs> then I'm going to do almost the same sort of thing with the test button. And test button, test all, and then uh, I want uh, to get the percentage correct. Test all, and I'm going to say uh, percent is percent. And let me let me at least number format that. Number format percent uh, two comma two, and then uh, let me also add a percent sign. And one of these days, what's that thing you can do in ES6 now with the back ticks? I'll get to that at some point. Uh, okay, so. This is what I'm doing. I have a train button and a test button. Let's see. Uh, let's see how this goes. I am going to train. Let me, let me just test. <laughs> Cannot read property length of undefined. All right. So one goofy thing that I set up here is I've got to pass in the data that I'm using, which I'm sure I could refactor in a way which I don't need to do that, but 
32%, ooh. Do I not have the 100 times in there? Let's, I thought in my train test, I thought, oh, let me, let me multiply it by 100. So the percent, right, is 0.35, but I want to multiply it by 100, so I see 35%. 35.5%. So we can see, test, 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 no matter what, now I'm going to train. Unfortunately, this is all blocking. I would want to do something, and I could use uh, ES6 and promises, or I could probably use set timeout. There are various ways that I could make this asynchronous so that it didn't, the browser didn't freeze up while it's doing the training, but I trained for one epoch. I test it again and I got 78%. So now at least we've got this interactive. I can kind of keep pressing train um, if, I, if I have the patience to do it and see if it improves a little bit, 80%. Now, here's the thing. Let's do something really exciting. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add a draw function. Actually, I'm not even going to add a draw function. I'm going to add a mouse dragged function. Right, whenever, um, yeah, I'm gonna add a draw function. <laughs> I'm gonna add a draw function, and I'm gonna say stroke weight eight line p mouse x p mouse y. So this is in p5, the previous mouse position. Then I'm gonna add mouse x mouse y, and then I'm gonna see what that looks like. I don't see anything. Probably because I need to say I want what I'm drawing to be white. There we go. But now I want to only draw if I'm pressing on down on the mouse. So I'm going to say if mouse is pressed. So now if mouse is pressed, so I could draw my own cat. I'm going to work really hard on this. I don't have a way. So now all I need to do, right? All I need to do is grab the pixels of what I've just drawn. Oops. Grab the pixels of what I've just drawn and turn it into a 28 by 28 image that I sample down and normalize to 784 inputs, give it to the neural network, and have the neural network say, meow. <laughs> so let's see if we can make that happen. Okay, so what do I do? Now I'm gonna need another button. And I'm gonna call this button guess. And uh, now I'm gonna say, I'm gonna just grab all this code, and I'm gonna say guess button equals select guess. And when I press the mouse on that button, what do I need to do? So the first thing I need to do is I need to somehow make an inputs array. That's all I need. I need an inputs array with a bunch of numbers between 0 and 1.0 according to the pixels of what I've drawn. What would be the best way to do this? I could just read the pixels, but it's 280 by 280. I think I can use copy. I think, or get. I got an idea. I think I can say let uh, image equal get. So I think the get function in P5 just grabs all the pixels from the canvas and makes it into a P5 image object. So let's see what that does, if I'm right about that. Yep, I got an image that's 280 by 280. Now what I can do is I can say image.resize to 2828. Let's take a look at that. Now I have an image that's 28 by 28. Now, let me load the pixels. And guess what? Guess what, everybody? We are just right back to where we were earlier when we, instead of reading in those bytes and turning them into pixels, I now have pixels that I essentially want to turn into bytes. So what I'm going to do is write a nice little loop. i equals 0. i is less than uh, image.pixels dot length, and I'm going to do something a little goofy here. I'm going to say i plus equal 4. So here's the thing. This is, by definition, a grayscale image. Right? I can't put anything but black, white, or gray in between here. And so what, um, 
what I want to do, I'm, I'm thinking here, I'm thinking here, is that the red, the green, and the blue values of each pixel are all going to be the same. So I can actually just skip every four elements in that pixel array because the pixel array is RGBA, RGBA, RGBA. So I should be able to look at just every fourth pixel, every four, not every fourth pixel, every fourth element of the array and say the, um, the brightness is that image.pixels index i and then inputs, now here's the thing that's a little bit awkward, I should be able to say i divided by four. Mm, you know what I'm going to do? I prefer to say, remember that variable I had called length? Let me use that, that should be 784. Another way I could do it is just say i times four right, to skip ahead every four and then say inputs index i equals bright divided by 255. Now let me just say console.log inputs. I just want to look at that. Did I, am I getting an array that is, 200, that is 784 floating point numbers long with each value normalized between zero and one? Let's see. So let me just draw some stuff in here, hit guess, and there we go. Now, can I find, ooh, oh yeah, yeah, there we go, look at this. So it is working. I mean, I could have made a mistake somewhere, but this seems about right. So, you know, I, I could be more thoughtful about drawing in a softer way that mirrors the doodles a little bit more, and the thickness is really gonna matter. So I'm going to have to figure it out. Now, uh, I'm being asked in the chat, shouldn't it be the other way around, black on white? Well, here's the thing. In all of my previous videos, if I open up my processing sketch, and this is a sort of point of confusion. Um, if you recall, this is going to take a little while to load, so I'm going to talk while it's loading. If you recall, uh, when I did all this stuff previously, you did see uh, a, bl a black pencil doodle on a white background, which is this. However, what I did the moment I wanted to off draw the pixels was I reversed it. The data actually in the data set is the other way around. So, um, so machine learning wise, I'm matching it correctly. What I might choose to do just to like make this a bit visually more appealing is I might choose to, um, just to be consistent here, is let me go back to sketch. Where's my draw function? Where's that draw function? What just happened? Did I put that draw function in like, oh, I put the draw function in train test. That was by accident. Let me move that back to sketch. Um, I'm gonna change the background to 255 and I'm going to change the stroke to zero and then I'm gonna do something weird, which is I'm actually say 255 minus bright. I'm gonna reverse it when I turn it into the data. So I can actually look at it like this. You know, I kind of, now in the canvas is white, but I have an idea. I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna say body. Can I say like background color? And let's just make this some like light gray. Look at me, look at me in my CSS. All right, I can see now, oh, beautiful. this is where I'm drawing my cat. Okay, so, oops. So let's press, so let's press guess and we can see it's still a whole lot of zeros. So I think I'm good. I think things are looking good. Okay, now what I need to do is now I need to say, actually to be perfectly honest with you, um, yeah, let's leave it, let's, um, no it's fine, let's now say, let guess equal neural network dot predict those inputs. And remember, I did this in the testing. I then already figured out the code in the testing to get that classification, right? Remember this, I have to find the highest, in the, in the outputs I have to find the highest one and what index that is. And so now I am going to say, uh, Maximum classification, and this is really goofy, but I'm just going to say if classification equals cat, 
This is like the worst code anybody could ever write. But um, I'm just going to do it this way, just to get this done. And I'm going to let those of you watching create your own variation of this with an actual interface and uh, be more thoughtful about how you, um, how you end, end this up. I got one more. Uh, train. Console log train. Okay. Are we ready? Are you ready? Are we ready? I think we are. So here we go. So I'm going to draw what I think is a cat. Some whiskers, some whiskers, I don't know, and a little smiley, a little dot. Okay. Now I'm going to guess. What is that? It's a rainbow. Of course it's a rainbow. I haven't trained it yet. So I shouldn't, if I got the right answer, we'd have gotten just very, very lucky. Now I am going to run the training. Okay. It's training. It's thinking. It's going to train. For one, it would be nice to have an animation that it's doing. It did for one. Let's just run the testing. You know, it's getting the test data right 80% of the time. So even if, at best, this is going to fail one out of 20% of the time, which is quite often, if you <coughs> remember recent events in our history. Here, okay, a guess. A train. Mm. Let's train it one more time. <laughs> At least he didn't think it was a rainbow this time. Let's train for another epoch. Try to get a little more accuracy here. I think I normalized the data correctly. <laughs> Let's run the tests again. 82%, let's guess. Train! So, <laughs> my soundboard doesn't work. It's a train, everybody. <laughs> and good night, thank you very much. This is the end of this video. All right, all right. Well, <laughs> let's do a rainbow. So I don't have a way of clearing this, unfortunately. So let's add something. <laughs> Are my sound effects still not working? It makes me sad because at least I could do things like... But the... Um, yeah, resizing blurs and makes gray. I should actually show what it looks like with it resized to make sure... Um, uh, uh, but is the sound effect still bad? Like, oh, okay, great. Let's go back and do that again. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm very happy with it to fail, but at least now I have the sound effects. It'll be more entertaining. Okay. All right, I'm going to draw for myself a cat. You know what? I think this isn't thick enough. One thing I should do, let's, let's actually, let's take a look. One thing that I could do here, uh, I want to see the resized image. So let's make this a little bit thicker when I'm drawing. I think that's going to help. Where am I drawing again? In the draw function. Let's make this uh, 24. I think this is going to be, ooh, I don't know. That's, I, I'd have to look back at the training data. No, I think it was actually fine. Let's just make it 16. Okay, that's a little bit better. So I'm going to try to make a cat. But actually, one thing that I want to do is uh, when I press the guess button, I kind of want to see that resized image. Where is that? Um, so let me also, um, let's just see if I can, I'm just going to draw it. Image guess zero, zero. I just want to be able to see it like, whoops, execute draw image on, hmm. Oh, not the guess. Image, image. Just want to see what it looks like. Yeah, that's the smaller version of it. I think that's okay. That kind of feels like what the doodles look like. Um, so let's try. Okay, I'm going to draw a cat. I really should probably use the rainbow. I'll give it some nice whiskers. And now I'm going to guess. What is this? Now I haven't trained the neural network at all. So I really, I just have like a one out of three chance of getting it right. It's a train! <laughs> and look, there's my doodle sample down. Yeah, so that's not correct. But of course, it shouldn't be correct. Now, 
let's train the neural network. And it's going to have to wait. We're going to train for a e-bot here. We're training. Okay, we trained. Let's run the testing just to see 75%. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's guess. It's still a train. I do want to point out though, whoa, what am I console logging here and why was it different? Something weird is going, oh, you know what? Because it's got all these pixels there now in the canvas. Uh, so that was a bad idea for me to draw that up there. That was sort of just for debugging. Let's try this again and <laughs> let's draw a rainbow. Rainbow might be more recognizable. Okay, so I'm going to draw my rainbow. Right, that's my rainbow. I'm going to guess. It's, it always thinks it's a train. Um, let's run the test data set. It got 33% correct. Let's actually train the network. It's going to be not a rainbow, probably. It's very unlikely that this will work in any way. Oh, it finished. OK, now here we go. I'm now going to guess again. I can't bear to look. <laughs> All right, fine, 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 fine. Let's train it one more time. We need two epochs for it not to just always think it's a train. I'm kind of suspicious here that something might be going wrong because it always thinks it's a train. It's a conspiracy because it's the coding train. All right, we did two epochs. Let's run the test again. Hey, our our accuracy went up from 33% to 80%. I really should get rid of these unnecessary console logs. And I'm going to guess again. Here we go. It's definitely going to just say train, isn't it? Oh, I hit train by accident. Oh, no. <laughs> Epoch 3, test 81%. OK, here we go now. Let's guess. At least I got cat. I mean, we got to be happy that we got cat, right? Let's train again. I mean, 20% of the time it's going to be wrong. Uh, and, and most likely more than that. Now, is it, did I do, is, is my data, is the new data formatted exactly right? Mm. Okay, did another epoch. 81%. All right, I'm going to pause for a minute here and investigate to make sure there isn't anything horribly wrong. Because what could be wrong, I mean, I'm not surprised this isn't working, but if my data, the way that I'm passing it and formatting the data is not the way it was trained, then we've got an issue. OK. OK. Um, I think it's a pixel data problem. Yeah, I think I wouldn't be surprised. Let's, let's kind of like. Think about this a little bit. So it's 784 pixels. One is white. I mean, the data is, right? Isn't the data in the training? Let's look at this. So I want to look at training. Oh, that's not a global variable. Uh, cats, right? If I look at the training data, it's all zeros. Oh, but it, yeah, it's all zeros, but it, I'm, I'm normalizing it later. It's all zeros, and then, you know, it's got a lot more nuance, probably, in terms of the anti-aliasing. Um, am I sh I'm not sure the constants are right. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. It, that also could be wrong. How could that be wrong, though? So I should check that. Um, what else? No, what am I? So let's, let's get rid of some console logs that I don't need. And let's console log the guess.
rainbow. Rainbow is the second one, one. This should be this one, one. And is that how I labeled them when I did training? I mean, I can't imagine that's off. I'm, so let's, okay, so let's, uh, uh, let's actually train it. I mean, the main problem here is I'm using like the tiniest data set in the world. It definitely needs more training. I just would love it to just sort of work. So let's uh, guess again. Cat. Hey! <laughs> that's kind of, so that's, you know, a more expected result. I'm just out of curiosity. If I add the whiskers. I need something, I need to, oh, I, I know, I can just do this. Uh, cat. 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 <laughs> Train. Uh, Oops, I just want to set the background, yeah. Thinner? I mean, I think I'm just suffering from uh, 255 minus val divided by 255 is wrong. Is that wrong? No, I think that's right. I, I mean, I, I did this very awkwardly in that I've changed the white on black, black on white thing, but I think I've done it um, consistently. Yeah, let's look at one of the training images. Uh, oh, it's just such a pain to render them. I don't feel like writing. I'm tired. It's the end of the day. I just want to finish this up. Let people play. Uh, oh, yeah, full-size cat. Right. Also, I should probably just do a lot more. I mean, I mean this is going to look more like a train now. Hey! Hey! Whoa, it was really sure about it, too. Fascinating. Train it again. Maybe that's my issue. Give me another epoch. Yeah. All right. I need a clear canvas button, yeah. All right. So let me um, get rid of this. Uh, <laughs> take a screenshot of this, okay? <laughs> just, just for the sake of uh, argument. Where are my console logs? Did I do it in Sketch? Yeah, I don't want this anymore. Okay. Okay. I know I could render the normalized image, but I should render the normalized image to really be sure. But I'm, let's do that. But I'm, I'm lazy. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the issue that the issue is so much. I mean, I really have done a, a horrifically bad job of. I'm walking over here, so let's just come. I'm gonna just. Come, I gotta be done with this, so I'm gonna come back. All right, thanks for. Uh, I'm back, and I actually got it to recognize this cat. So let's let's try doing this though. In the let's let's try again. So, oh, and, but actually, let me at least add a clear, um, a clear button. So um, let's go here and let's add one more button. Button ID equals clear, clear. And I'm going to go to sketch.js and I'm going to say, uh, whoops, 
um, clear, uh, clear button equals select, clear, and then I'm going to say clear button dot mouse pressed, um, and I'm going to just clear the background. So now, whoops, mouse pressed is not a function. Now, clear, okay, so we're in good shape here. Uh, there we go. So, all right, so now, let me try draw my cat that's kind of more like a cat like this. Oh, my other cat drawing was so much better and more sort of like centered. <laughs> I mean, really, really the issue is that I'm using a very small training set. But let's guess. It is a rainbow. That is clearly a rainbow. Thank you very much. Let's train for one epoch. Let's test and let's guess. <laughs> it's the cat train, everybody. Welcome to the cat train. At least I can clear and I can try drawing another cat now. I don't have to retrain. Whoops. It's still a train. Let's train again. Let's train again. And let's clear. I can't clear until I finish training. Are you still watching this video? Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get it to recognize something. Hey, that left a cat, finally. <laughs> I'm getting 81% correct. Uh, let me try a different, like, rainbow. Now that looks more like a rain train bow. That's definitely a train bow. It's funny, when I went into my, like, uh... Let's, let's go another epoch. It's kind of going to shuffle up the trading a little bit. <laughs> so the train. <sighs> okay. Well, <laughs> Matt, too, you're going to have fun editing all this out. Um, I know, I know, your training data ranges from 0 to 255, but your inputs range from 0 to 1, uh, and that's black on white. I have normalized and accounted for all of that, because when I actually, I mean, I should really double check it, but when I train, I take the values and I normalize them by dividing by 255. Then, Um, then um, draw thinner lines. We could, I wonder if the thinner lines would do it. So that's that problem. The data itself is black on white, and I'm drawing white on black, but I reverse it. It's white on black, I'm drawing black on white, I'm drawing white on I'm drawing black on white. The data is white on black, so I invert it and then normalize it. Um, so I think I have all that correct. I, I mean, I could be wrong. Thinner lines would be interesting to try. Mm. Oh, I can't map if there are u int 8 thingies. Ah! Ah, ah, oh, oh no, see, I know why I don't use those. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It changed it to map, it changed it to map. Oh, oh this is so good. This is so good. This is a great problem to have. Um. Let's just do it in the testing, because the testing is not very much stuff. It looks kind of normalized in there. Oh, but am I only getting zeros and ones? Hold on. No, but the inputs shouldn't be, oh, oh yeah is restricted to u int 8. So it's just zeros and ones, which is going to be weird. 
Yes, 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 this is bad. From data map, okay, all right. Hold on, everyone. <laughs> There's actually kind of a major problem right here. Uh, I was being all fancy refactoring it to use this map function, but that makes these inputs restricted to u int 8 thingies, integers, only a 0 or 1. I really want to just divide by 255 and make them nice floating point numbers. So I could go back to my loop, or apparently I could say the array from data dot map. I believe this will create a new array, and let me just check that in the testing. I'm going to say console.log inputs, and let me run test, and now we can see, yes, this is a regular array um, with numbers that are somewhere in here, oh, let me look in the middle, that are floating point numbers. Okay, this is good. This could be the source of a lot of our problems. So let me take this and put this also here. So that fixes it for the training. And now, oh, and by the way, <laughs> while I was taking that break, I added a clear button. And let me just show you the code for that. Trying to figure out what was wrong. Uh, uh, in sketch.js, there is now a clear button, and all that clear button does is draw the white background. So, we are ready to attempt again. <laughs> Let's try, I'm hopeful. Let's just see, by the way, what does it think an empty image is? It thinks it's a train. Because as we know, it's always a train. <laughs> Maybe I should try drawing a train. Let me draw the rainbow. I feel like the rainbow's gotta be the most recognizable. And I made, by the way, I made the stroke a little bit thinner. And I don't know. Let's make this the rainbow. Okay, so now, first of all, I haven't trained it yet. Let's guess. <laughs> it still thinks it's a train, obviously. Let's test. Oh, I forgot to have that console log. 31%. I want to get rid of that console log in train test. Let's get rid of that. So let me start over here for a second. And let me draw my rainbow. And let me guess. It is, of course, a train, as it always is. Let's run the test. We got 30% right because we're just guessing. Let's train for an epoch. Oh, it's, it's finished. I get so involved with my dance. Let's, we got 85% oh, correct. This is good. Let's now guess. <laughs> it's a cat. Watch, look. It's got whiskers and a little like, little ears. And it is totally a cat. It has guessed a cat. Let's clear and let's try drawing a train. This is my train. It's got a big choo-choo thing. There's my train. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This is the coding train. So I'm, there's so much that could be improved here. The real problem is that I am using a tiny data set. The other problem is The other problem is I haven't been really so thoughtful about thinking about this spatially. I'm flattening this image into one vector of pixels. And you know, where, where it's the, using a so-called convolutional layer in advance of this, what this is, or this like final layer, is something that could actually help this to work much more accurately. I hope to come back to that in a future video. Also, probably adding softmax and cross entropy are going to be a way to sort of squeeze out a little bit more accuracy. Um, but ultimately, what I would be curious for you to do if you're watching this, I'm gonna, there's gonna be more videos in this playlist, but this is, um, if you're watching this, <laughs> you can have, and, and they don't exist yet, 
um, what I would love for you to do is think about a way that you can uh, try this with larger data, um, try this with um, uh, animation, and uh, think about ways to make this a bit more robust, um, make it more creative and goofy and fun, but we've got the basic idea here. I'm looking at the chat. Um, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the chat when I was trying to end this video. This is going to be an edit point I've frozen so that there will be good continuity. Um, so, Share with me what you make. All the code for this will be published. There's so much more to do with it. Um, but we've got a basic um, doodle classifier that mostly thinks things are trains. So thanks for watching the coding train. Um, all right, let's play around here. Clear. Um, let me draw a cat. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm hungry, I'm tired, it's been a long week, I'll be back next Friday. This is my cat. Ah! Hold on. It's kind of working. It recognized my cat. Can we edit that in too? I don't know. Um, you know, I, I got a one out of three chance. <laughs> Come on, everybody. This is exciting. Why is it that when I'm not in the mode of like making the video, it stops working? Um, all right. Uh, try increasing the stroke weight again. All right. I think this is pretty darn wonderful. Look at this. This is getting, can, Mathieu, can we like maybe like put together some montage toward the end that kind of, uh, maybe I could talk over it. Uh, let's try this. <laughs> After this video ended, for, I went and tried a whole bunch of other drawings and they worked. So right now you're going to see a quick montage of those moments where it worked. Uh, that's probably useless, but uh, if we could put something in there. Uh, uh, eh, okay, see, good. Okay. Um, thanks, everybody. Oops. Rainbow. Oh, good. Now it's not working. All right. The coding, whatever that is. All right, everybody. Um, show, I should show the percentage. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> My drawing might be improving. <laughs> All right, everybody, it is 6.30. This has been, uh, how many hours of live streaming has this been today? Let me think about this. I did an hour and a half this morning. I started at about 3.30, so three hours. I'm, I'm, I'm close to five hours at this point. Um, the end dance, what is the end dance? <laughs> um, and uh, let me think about all, how many videos are gonna come out of this? I guess I don't need to worry about this now. Um, what's the end? What's the end dance? End dance. People demand the end dance. I don't know what that is. Is it when I read random numbers? I definitely want to read some random numbers. Those of you who stayed up to the middle of the night to watch this live stream, you are soon going to be able to go to sleep, and I will be here to put you to sleep. Thirty-one thousand two hundred and thirty. Forty-one thousand two hundred. 43,973, 62,146, 70,245, 39,856, 24,029, 38,382, 9,225, 49,848, 29,240, I'm in the wrong screen! <laughs> I've never done it from over here. 
56,685, 63,701, 16,351. Is that the end dance? I don't know. Um, so, what else have I got to say? Spooky numbers. Uh, thank you, everybody. Do another epoch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Train another epoch. Oh, actually, it's, it's, it's so much more accurate than it was before. Just because of the, now it has, um, it's not just a zero or one. Epoch two. Oh, no, no test. 86%. So it's, it's got 86% right, which is pretty amazing. Um, as always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm going to do this dot. I'll take a few questions. This dot, this dot, this dot. I'm going to do this dot, this dot. All the data is 800 each. It's 2,400 training data images, and there's 800 rainbows, 800 cats, and 800 trains. <laughs> yes, J Jamie writes, it's great to see you drained on the live stream rather than relentlessly happy in your video. Where are you from? Well, I, I guess I'm from New York City. I've lived in New York City since 1995, but I did grow up in the town of Baltimore. Go O's! Will you try next time with a massive data set? Yes. I, my goal is to work with a much larger data set and uh, use something that's uh, hardware accelerated like DeepLearn.js with this new library that a uh, um, different uh, group of collaborators here at ITP are developing called ML5. Um, what did the cow say? Something like that. Um, and uh, do you know how to style a web page? Definitely not. And even if I did, it would be the ugliest web page ever made. Um, all right, so I am going to, oh, let's, while I'm here, let's just go ahead. Um, let's see. Uh, I modified MNIST, and I, uh, I don't know what I modified there. Let me uh, add, is there anything weird in this directory that I don't want to add? I think it's fine. So, um, yeah. So I'm now going to put this on GitHub. Oh, 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 oh! I learned something this week. Tiny subversions on Twitter. I went to a workshop about Git, and I now know that I'm doing it all wrong. First of all, I really need to use this like I term. <laughs> I need to really work on my terminal because I should get, I should have what branch I'm on, and there's all sorts of stuff. I should have stuff color coded. I got to get to that. But I am no longer. I am no longer. Never again. Am I going to use dash m? I mean, sure, if I'm just changing the readme or short. This is a shortcut. When I commit. I want to write a good solid description of what I'm writing. So I'm going to do this. Now, I don't think I've configured a text editor or anything, but let's see what happens. Ah, ooh, uh-oh. I think I might be in Vim. Am I in Vim or VI? Help me with this, everybody. All right, so the commit message, these will all be ignored, but look at this. It's telling me I need to configure a, a different text editor, but I'll just do this right here in terminal. Um, I'm going to write at the top. I'm going to say, oh, how do, I, how, do I, how do I use this thing? No, I don't want to exit. I want to write my comments at the top. I to type. OK. I, insert. This is the first, this is me adding the quick, the Google quick draw doodle classification example. Wait, don't I write the short comment first? And then, so don't I do something like, what's the proper way to do this? So I want to say, I'm just going to say, adding new uh, doodle classifier example. Now, 
So that would be the short message, right? And then now, anything I put here would be the longer, more descriptive thing. So I'm going to say, I spent the day <laughs> recording videos, recording a set of video tutorials about how to do image classification with a simple toy neural network. There are lots of problems with this. And the goal is purely educational and to have some fun. I hope to improve this example in the future. Um, it could use an interface and some animations. Softmax function and working with a larger data set and ML5 deep learn.js. There we go. Okay, first line is the title, others are the message. So this is now my commit message. I really worked hard writing it. <laughs> it's like a dear diary. Oh my God. <laughs> it's totally, oh, I, except for the fact that I don't know how to use Vim. Oh yeah, dear diary. Well, how do you sign off a diary? Yours forever. Uh, the coding, the coding train, choo, choo. Okay, now what do I do to make sure I save this without losing it? Then it signs it. Uh, escape colon WQ colon WQ escape. I know colon does something. Okay, wait, hold on. I'm not looking at that YouTube chat. I don't want to lose this beautiful message. I do escape first. Okay, I hit escape. Colon W, that writes. Can I just do that first without Q? Then Q and that'll quit. <laughs> I think I did it. Git log. There it is. Oh, my commit's there. This is the greatest thing ever. Everybody, uh, thank you to Tiny Subversions because, uh, I don't know, screenshot this. <laughs> this is what I learned from Darius Kazemi, uh, who is amazing and uh, so thoughtful about open source. Uh, thank you so much. I'm so excited about this. Um, and now, so you, we, you can all send that to him on Twitter if you want. Uh, git push origin master. Wait a second. It's not going to let me do this, isn't it? Didn't I like do some kind of like circle CI crazy continuous integration thing? Let's see what happens. Nah, it was fine with that. It was fine with that. Uh, now, if we go to here. We go to this commit, there it is. Oh, oh, glorious. Mwah. I am going to make every single commit message I ever write with dear diary, sorry, with dear diary. And I don't know why, is diary always capitalized when you write dear diary? Um, all right, so that's done. You can now look at the code. So here's the thing. Um, at the moment, I probably won't, don't want pull requests on this because I want to continue to expand and improve it. But I would be very happy with, although I guess I need to, I don't know how to best manage this, but I certainly would be okay with, um, you could file an issue with a link to what you made. I'm not sure yet. I guess a, a community contribution on the page that goes on the Coding Trade website. Anyway, I'll have to figure that out. But just be aware. I do, I'm very interested in improving this and making this example a bit better. But for me, it's somewhat important that the code that's online matches the videos. Although I think what I probably would do is this is sort of separate from the code that lives here. So I could probably freeze the code here somewhere and then have the Toy Network Library be expanded a little bit. 
All right. Oh, yes, the dash V flag. I get a full diff in the editor, too. Okay, it should be dear GitHub. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got to go home. I am getting crazy. I agree. Goodbye, everybody. Uh, I will take one or two last questions. Oh, so I, just, I hope that this chat can play back. Um, it's supposed to now, but I don't know if I needed to configure something. So somebody let me know. Um, and yeah. All right, I just got to go. Uh, it's 6.30. I'm going to go home. Um, and have a nice weekend. Oh, in the bomb cyclone, apparently. Uh, and I'm just looking to see if I have any emergency messages. Uh, I don't. And um, yeah, all right, all right, all right, everybody. Goodbye. Mwah. I will see you all next Friday. I should be here next Friday. Um, that's the plan. I will not be here two weeks from this Friday. Oh, no. Maybe I will be. There's some Friday in the future that I'm missing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think that is two weeks from this Friday that I am going to be away. So anyway, I'll be around soon enough. Oh, yeah, thank you. Just in case anyone is wondering, if you want to try this out right now, codingtrain.github.io slash toy neural network. I don't know, somebody just post that in the chat. <laughs> There's, you can actually run the demo online. We've got to clean this up. Okay, I got to go. Thanks, everybody. I have used Eclipse. Boy, have I used Eclipse a lot. I use Eclipse a lot. I, oh, I love Eclipse. <laughs> I'm a weirdo. I got to do a video tutorial about making a processing library with Eclipse someday. Um, goodbye. <laughs>